Hello everyone, we're on question 12 now of paper two from 2025 for Edexcel. And it's one of those popular modulus uh, functions, uh, modulus graph questions. So figure three shows the graph of the equation with y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to uh, four times the modulus of x minus three minus five. Given that a is a constant and that the modulus of a is one, find the possible values of f of a. Well, if the modulus of a is one, that means that a was either 1 or a was minus 1. So we just need to evaluate um, f of 1 and f of minus 1. So f of 1 is going to be 4 times 1 minus 3 minus 5. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. The modulus of minus 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. And then f of x could be minus 1. So we have 4 times minus 1 minus 3. Minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. The modulus of minus 4 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 take away 5 is 11. So that's part A done. Those are our two different values. And we just needed to work out f of 1 and f of minus 1. Part B, find the range of g of x, uh, find the range of g of f of x, given that g of x is equal to 2x add 17, where x is a member of the set of all real numbers. Okay, now the crucial thing here is to, uh, and very important skill in this topic, is to know how to find the coordinates of this vertex here. And I often sort of like liken it, it's not kind of like exact science, but if you imagine it follows a similar pattern to like where you're finding the minimum of a quadratic, okay? So I think if we had this um, in year 13 by now, we're probably quite used to the idea of the fact that this would give us a minimum turning point of a quadratic curve would be at three and minus five. And it's very similar here in the modulus function. If you kind of like think to yourself, imagine it was a quadratic, what would the coordinate of the turning point be? It works the same way here. So we can see that we can expect the using that logic that the vertex is going to have coordinates 3 minus 5. Okay, so that means that the smallest value of f of x is going to be minus 5. So we can say, therefore, that f of x is greater than or equal to minus 5. Now we want to find the range of values of g of f of x, so let's put that smallest value of f of x into g of x. So we're going to put minus 5 into our, um, into our function of um, g of x. So we're going to basically work out g of f of x, and we're going to put minus 5 in. So when we put minus 5 in, we get two, into g of x, we get 2 times minus 5 add 17, which is minus 10 add 17. So that gives us 7. So therefore, the smallest value of g of f of x is going to be 7. So g of f of x has a range that is greater than or equal to 7. And how do we know that? Well, g of x is just a straight line, okay? Uh, and so we're saying that the smallest value that can go into it from f of x is minus 5. And when we do that, that corresponds to a g of x value of 7. And as x increases, our g of x is only going to increase as well. So therefore, we can say that this minimum value of 5, when it goes into g of x, is going to give us the minimum value as well of g of f of x. So therefore, we can say that the range of g of f of x is greater than or equal to 7. OK, the last bit of the question, and this is worth four marks, I think. Yeah, and it's a really popular bit. So it says the function h is defined by h of x is equal to k times x, where x is a real number. Um, given that the equation f of x is equal to h of x has no solutions, find the range of values of k. Now, I've seen this come up so many times. It's really popular. They really like this in the exam uh, board because they know that um, people really get confused about what's going on here. OK, so there's my h of x. Sorry, that looks a bit scruffy, doesn't it? Let me just make that a bit tidier. So there's my h of x. h of x equals k of x. OK, and there's our f of x from before. Now, the logic of what's going on here is if you imagine there is a certain value of h of x where it's parallel to this line here. OK, and you can see that there's going to be no solutions at that point because these two lines are parallel. They're never going to meet all the way up there. So there's no solutions. OK, 
Now, as the gradient changes like this, now this is what's confusing. This is actually the gradient is increasing. Okay, now let's think about what is the gradient there? Well, we know that from the graph of f of x, that the equation of f of x, that we have the modulus of x minus three minus five like that. So this has a gradient of four because it's a little bit like y equals mx plus c. Okay, so that's a gradient of four. So that was down there and it got reflected up. So this has a gradient here of minus four. Okay, so there are no solutions when h of x has a gradient of minus four. In other words, when k equals minus four, there are no solutions. Now I got a bit confused about this. You can see I rubbed it out originally, but what happens now is as the line k um, h of x equals kx changes like this, still no solutions, still no solutions, still no solutions, stop. There's one solution when it gets to that point. Now here's the confusing bit. As we've been doing that, the gradient has been increasing. Okay, no, it doesn't look like it, but when you've got a gradient of minus four, let's imagine here we've got a gradient of minus 3.5, and let's say here we've got a gradient of minus three. Well, minus three is bigger than minus four, okay? So there are no solutions when k is greater than or equal to minus four, okay? So here we are at minus four, no solutions. So k is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's now a gradient of, say, minus 3.5. Still no solutions up until we hit this point here when there's suddenly one solution, okay? Because if that line was there like that, we'd have the one solution there. And so what does that correspond to? Well, let's from this, we know the coordinate of this vertex as we discussed earlier in the question. So we can find the gradient of um, the line at this point, which is just going to be rise over run. So the change in y is minus five and the change in x is three. So this corresponds to a gradient of minus five over three. So there will be no solutions to the equation h of x is equal to f of x, where k is less than five over three, okay? So if k is less than five over three, that basically just means that we are like somewhere here and it has to be greater than minus four, okay? Because uh, we get all the way to here and we get to minus four, okay? If the gradient gets to be less than minus four, then we'll look like that and we'll have a solution somewhere up here. Okay, so that's our answer. That's our range of values for which there are no solutions um, to uh, that equation. Uh, and a very, very popular idea. I've seen that come up several times. Definitely an important skill, that one to have in your armory of exam questions. I hope you found that useful and I will see you in the next video.